So there's a big story out. Stephen A. Smith, I'm told, uh, broke a story a couple days ago. So uh, Stephen A. Smith, uh, he does journalism and stuff. Uh, Stephen A. Smith reported that Dan Gilbert is looking to sell the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, so there you go. So uh, props, tip of the cap to uh, Stephen A. Smith for that and stuff. Um, here's the thing. Two reasons Dan Gilbert is selling the franchise. Number one is the rest of the country has been on a seven to eight year high economically. Cleveland isn't. According to an economic report a year ago, 76.8% of Cleveland's population resides in distressed zip codes. According to a story in the Washington Post, Ohio's recovery from the recession has lagged other parts of the country because it lacks dyn dynamism, which is it's not able to change legacy in uh, industries in the growing economy, meaning Ohio's economy ain't keeping up. And in Ohio, Cleveland's is the worst. So part of the reason he's selling it is without LeBron, this is barely an NBA franchise. I've asked several players through the years. They like living in Cleveland, some of them. But like it was a before Dan Gilbert, it was a bad arena and a bad organization and a bad roster. And then LeBron comes, and then Dan Gilbert buys it, and he builds a beautiful arena, and he wins a championship, and he, he, he convinces LeBron to come back. But some of this is, dude, if your economy's bad now, I mean, in the last eight years, like California's been a meteor straight up. Housing prices, development, uh, international growth, international development. Like if you can't grow in the economy now, you're not going to grow. And it's not a city, Cleveland. In the state of Ohio, Columbus is doing pretty well. Cleveland's not. And if you're not growing now and you bought the thing for $300 million, you can sell it for $1.2 billion. Get out. Get out when the getting's good. I got to give Dan Gilbert credit. A, he talked LeBron into coming back. And B, I'd sell it too. If I think LeBron's not going to be here long term, now's the time to get out. The other component to this is I don't know Dan Gilbert. I know those who know him. Dan Gilbert, you know, the slick look, the weightlifting, he's got an ego. And I think what he's tired of is thinking to himself, I'm the guy that builds the arena. I'm the guy that made the Cavaliers, you know, I drafted Kyrie Irving. You know, this organization, I'm tired of being LeBron's valet. I'm tired of waking up in the morning and LeBron controlling my net worth. I'm getting out of this thing. And I don't blame him necessarily. Like I've said, the most important thing in all of sports is owners. They got the capital. You can't. Vince McMahon wants a new football league. It only works if you can find 12 billionaires that want to join you. Otherwise, it'll never work. So I will say this. Nothing against players, coaches, GM, scouts. Owners are the most important part of any league. Because without the capital, there's not an endless supply of owners. Go ask the Dodgers, who lost a good owner, got Frank McCourt, and then got rid of him. There's everybody, almost every franchise in the last 70 years has had a bad run. Go ask Cincinnati fans, Mariner fans. Go ask Laker, uh, uh, Clipper fans. Uh, you know, so, you know, the Mets fans don't like their owners. Go ask Marlin fans this week. So you need owners, and Gilbert's like, I'm tired of being beholden to LeBron James. Our economy's not keeping up with America. I bought it for $300 million. I can sell it for $1, $2 billion. And there's a lot of global revenue out there right now that you can find a couple of three or four rich New York guys that want a toy and go sell it to them. That's what happened in Milwaukee. Uh, but I don't think this is I, – I think this is Dan Gilbert doing something really smart is if Ohio's economy can't grow now, Cleveland's, sell them <laughs> out of the business. Because I, I would make an argument, if you took LeBron, if LeBron James never, ever played for the Cavaliers, they'd won four playoff series in 33 years. They were like Buffalo Bills without the charm. Like they were a borderline NBA franchise. There were, there were, they used to have a guy named Ted Stepien that owned the team. I mean, they thought about pulling away their franchise from the city. So, uh, anyway, that story was broken by Stephen A. Smith. And I'm going to say it again. You do not 
want to make an enemy out of me. I'm not having it. Now, Gottlieb was on the show this week. This was ridiculous. And he blames LeBron because he says everywhere LeBron go, well, here's Doug Gottlieb earlier this week. One of the things we give credit to LeBron for, uh, guys that love LeBron like you and Nick Wright and others. Look at the record for the Cavs when he left. Look at the record for the Heat when he left. Part of it is that's who LeBron is. Like, you try and create everything to be perfect for him, and when he leaves, it's like the kid that comes over to your house, and every time he comes over to your house, right, somebody ends up being sick or the playroom's messed up, and you're like, what, what happened? They're like, well, LeBron was here. This is what happened. LeBron's a lot of fun, and everybody has a good time, and then when he leaves... You know, everything is a mess. That's LeBron James. <laughs> That's funny. Um, listen, Dan Gilbert is getting out at the right time. He really is. You know, you don't, billionaires mostly manipulate millionaires. And, um, you know, I, I think what Gilbert's doing is smart. It, it's time to sell. Cleveland's economy is not growing now. It's never going to grow. Uh, you know, they've, they've moved out of a manufacturing economy, and they're not keeping up even with Columbus. So it's like, I'm out. LeBron's leaving. I'm out. Good time to sell. Christine with the news. No, 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 no. Turn on the news. This is the Herd Line News. The 49ers have until March 6th to use the franchise tag on Jimmy Garoppolo. March 6th. Yes, and if they don't, then they have until uh, July 15th to work out. Or they could do that and then have until July 15th to work out a longer-term deal. And when you listen to John Lynch talking about this, it sounds like he's pretty hopeful they'll get something done. He was a great addition to our team. Um, you know, kind of a game changer. When you find the right guy at that position, uh, it's really good for your franchise. We believe we found the right guy. Now the challenge is getting Jimmy signed, and, uh, you know, we're, gonna, we're working hard towards that. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. And, uh, you know, I, I think he wants to be with us, and we want him there. And so I think it makes too much sense not to happen. So it's just a matter of getting it done. That's exciting. I'm excited for the 49ers. I really am. I think, you know, it's – I love to watch – like when Indianapolis gets Andrew Luck or they get Jimmy Garoppolo. And Mitch Trubisky in Chicago is like this. Mm -hmm. Like a team that can't get its footing. I love to see what I think is the next great star. And I think Garoppolo, like Deshaun Watson in Houston. Like I'm sitting there watching him thinking, could Houston for 10 years be great? Could they become the Pittsburgh Steelers? That's an ex I, This is the, the Niners to me. Even though, you know, we don't talk Niners a lot, I think next year could be the most interesting team in the entire sport. What would their record be? I think they're going to be a playoff team. I think they're going to battle for a playoff team. I think their coach is great, their quarterback's great, their defensive front's great. And, you know, we know in the NFL you can flip about 30 or 40% of your roster in one year. They had a great draft last year defensively. I think they'll go after offensive players early. And I think San Francisco has $118 million of cap salary cap space. Watch the Niners in March be a player in the free agent market. They won't be stupid, but they could use an – remember what the Rams did this past season, Christine? They went out left tackle, center, uh, Robert Woods. Watch San Francisco because their defensive front's good. Watch San Francisco go out and flip a lot of their – offensive roster they're going to be to me the rams of this year look at john lynch doing a really good I know. job already he's doing a great job speaking of playoff teams so chris long won the super bowl last year with the patriots and then in free agency he went to the eagles so it's pretty interesting for him uh, bill belichick was asked about long and said that he actually is a much better fit in philly chris has a lot of good skills um but his overall skill set and and experience it's probably more in, it definitely is more in the system he's in than it was in our system. In the end, he's probably has a better fit there um, for his skills and for this point in his career than, than maybe we had for him. So that's, I yeah, understand that. That's, he probably made a good decision. Yeah. Is that shots at all? No, I don't think Can it is. I, I, no, I think, you know, football. In basketball, well, we're seeing it right now, Christine, with Isaiah Thomas. Like, does it we, – we worried about Chris Paul and Harden. Is it going to work together? It has. Mm -hmm. Isaiah LeBron, uh, Isaiah Kevin Love, like, it doesn't work. Like, a lot of sports is, you know, like like some per, – it's personalities, is your game work. 
uh, you know, it's very possible hit what they do, you know, in football. Do you run a 4-3? Do you run a 3-4? Do you need a rush in? Do you want a guy that can drop into space? You know, just it's possible Chris Long's game is way better for Philly than New England. If the Cavs trade Isaiah, would that make you finally say that the Celtics got the better end of that deal? I never worry about winning trades. I worry about winning titles. So Kyrie inherited Brad Stevens. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I so I know he got the better coach. Whereas Isaiah, off a of surgery, inherits Ty Lu, which, as LeBron went, went into this year, we were talking about LeBron leaving. So Kyrie inherited a growth business with a great coach. Isaiah Thomas, off a of surgery, inherited a, a coach I think we think is pretty good and a situation where the best player in the league could be leaving. So I think that what they inherited, now Kyrie's better than IT, that, that is, and he's healthier. I mean, you come off a hip surgery, that's what old people get. So there's no question, Kyrie physically is a better player today than Isaiah Thomas. And you can use him long term. Yeah, I mean, Isaiah Thomas is not, I'm not going to pay a 5'8 guy 29 large a year. I'm just, I'm just not. In the NBA, I'm not. Who cares if he's 5'8"? I, he's I do. Size matters. I like It does. Like, for pro athletes, I always said, when all else fails, who's the bigger, stronger athlete? I mean, I'm really, seriously, like, that's one of my things. Like, Sam Darnold and Josh Rosen, the quarterbacks come out of college. Mm -hmm. Darnold's a bigger, thicker athlete. Okay. When all else fails and I'm even, I'll go with the bigger, stronger athlete. Uh, the Super Bowl line has dropped to, this is as of yesterday, uh, minus four and a half, Patriots wow. minus four and a half. Wow. Right, so apparently there's a multi-million dollar wager on the Eagles, according to the MGM Sportsbook. They're not going to say the exact amount of the bet, but it is a multi-million dollar wager. That scares me. First of all, who has that kind of money to putting down, be putting down a multi-million dollar wager on something that is kind of close? If I was super rich, I would bet on Philadelphia too. Millions? But here's what's how, funny. Wait, how much money do you have to have? Well, I'd never do that. Where you could do mil a million dollar bet. I would never buy a Maserati if I won Powerball. It's just not in me. Some people have. But that's cars. That's. Well, different. I'm just saying, you know, the I, I'm never going to buy a really, really pricey car. Okay. Okay. So, then let's change it. Okay. How much money would you have to have in your bank to buy a private plane? Because I know you would buy that. We, well, I would, but I would. Um, that's hypothetical. It's not going to happen. So the only thing I've ever said that I that's a rich person's bougie thing that I like. Did you just say bougie? You know, like over the top <laughs> is a private jet because I, I hate the airport. Yes. I have to go to the airport today. I hate the airport. Well, you I still have to go to an airport when you yeah. fly private. I don't know what the number is. I would That would be the great RJ thing. RJ reported yesterday that, remember the let it ride better from the World Series? He yeah. just kept betting each game and got it right. And yeah. That he is betting millions and millions on the Eagles. I don't know if it's the same guy for this story, Listen, but you, that's who it was. It's four and a half. If you gave me Philadelphia and five, but here's what's funny about Philadelphia. Philadelphia is Jacksonville. They have a hot, by the way, a month ago we were like, Blake Bortles is amazing. Right now we're like, Nick Foles is amazing. Philadelphia is Jacksonville. They're defensive led, and we're falling for a quarterback that deep down we know is not great. And do you really think Doug Peterson and Doug Marone or Belichick, they're the same team. So you're taking the Eagles and the points, with the points yeah. but you think the Patriots will win. Yes, I think it, okay. I'm saying if you I don't like four and a half, I'd stay away. Yeah, but when close. it was five and a half, six, I'd take Philadelphia. But I think what listen, do they know? Philadelphia is Jacksonville. It's the same thing. You're you're falling in love with a coach that we don't know is great. And you're suddenly falling in love with a quarterback who a year ago we called a bum. And it's a defense team. The difference is Jacksonville's got a way better secondary than Philadelphia does. So New England's going to win the football game. They got a better taste of say And by the way, this time, it's, it's, it's Philadelphia is so great. They're playing at home. This is a neutral field game. And New England, I imagine, will have a larger fan base than yes. Philadelphia. So it'll be 60-40 New England. New England's got the experience. They have the better coach. They have the better offense. They have the better quarterback. To me, Philadelphia is Jacksonville. And by the way, the Jacksonville game was 24-20. I think it's going to look a lot like that, where Philadelphia is going to come out in the first half, flex their defensive muscles. They're going to look great for a half. And then here's Brady and Belichick halftime. They align stuff, adjust stuff. They start chipping away, and they win the football so game. So it sounds like it'll be a good game. Yes, I think it will be a good game. Yes. That's good. Uh, Christine with the news. 
Well, that's the news. And thanks for stopping by. The herd lie. Oh, news. something just uh, it, it just drives me crazy. A reporter in our business, I know him, asked something yesterday. Can we stop asking this question next? Guys, it's New Year's. Want to get in better shape? Want to look better in your clothes? Want to look better around your lady friend? Why don't you change your vitality, your energy, your recovery? It's called M-Drive. Yes, it's nutrition science. Five clinically tested ingredients to elevate your endurance and vitality and stamina. The best part is M-Drive has exactly what you need. There's M-Drive Workforce. It's sustained energy. M-Drive Boost and Burn. Fat Burner. M-Drive Prime. Get you off the couch. If you're looking for M-Drive, you can always go to the internet, right? Buy M-Drive.com. Then put in H-E-R-D. That gets you 25% off. Buy M-Drive.com. Code heard. Or go to Walgreens, Dwayne Reed, GNC, Vitamin Shot. Got one of those by my house. Sprouts. Refind your Prime with M-Drive. That's all.